G'day, I'm Eddie Springer and I'm here today to talk to you about dual battery systems. We at Springer Solar get asked a lot about setting up dual battery systems on vehicles, caravans and camper trailers. And today I want to talk to you about the different types of systems you can set up, how to set them up to uh, run your charge systems the most effectively and the different types of products you can use for each type of system. So the, the simplest and easiest system to set up would be a dual battery system that would be under bonnet. Okay, we have our start battery and auxiliary battery. We've got room under bonnet. We, we, we buy a, a factory uh, tray that we can fit under bonnet to ensure that our battery can, uh, can be charged effectively in that vehicle. If your vehicle can't accommodate a second battery under bonnet, we would look at another location it can be installed. So that would be on a dual cab ute, maybe under the tray, in the tub, or in a, uh, a full size four wheel drive, maybe in the boot of the four wheel drive, under your drawer system, or, or a similar location to that. So there's products and types of dual battery systems available that will allow you to do that. The third type of system would be a battery that's remote from the vehicle that would be in a camper trailer or caravan. Dual battery systems in a camper trailer or caravan, very easy to set up and generally got a little bit more room in that location to install single or multiple batteries. Now you may end up needing a combination of all of these types. You might have a dual battery for under bonnet for your vehicle and also a battery in your camper trailer or caravan while you're traveling. All auxiliary batteries can be treated as one auxiliary battery bank. So when we're charging those batteries, we're charging them all together in parallel and our start battery is left independent. The main objective of a dual battery system and a dual battery isolator is that we leave the start battery untouched when the vehicle is off. We can draw down on our auxiliary batteries as much as possible and as much as we're happy to discharge them to ensure we get good life but we can always start our engine. We can always start our vehicle to travel home at the end of our trip. So our dual battery isolator leaves that start battery uh, isolated out of the system when we're stationary. The simplest and easiest form of dual battery isolator is something like this from Red Arc, which is a smart start product. It's a simple voltage sensitive relay that's driving a contactor. It looks at the voltage of our start battery before it engages and when we're stationary and we start discharging our batteries, the unit will disconnect that start battery from our auxiliary so we can draw down on them. Red Arc is a product there. We can buy a similar type of dual battery uh, combiner here in a little pack, comes with cabling, lugs, heat shrink, everything you need to install a battery under bonnet. The only downside to these items is we have to be careful about the type of vehicle that we're installing them into. A lot of new four wheel drives and newer uh, vehicles have smarter alternators in them. That the variable voltage alternators and temperature compensating alternators, the voltage won't get high enough to engage one of these simple dual battery isolators. We need something more sophisticated. You know, a device that will, will be triggered by ignition. So a Red Arc uh, do a couple of different models. Enerdrive does a couple of different models. All of these products can be uh, triggered by ignition, can be triggered at a lower uh, start voltage. And the benefit is they also have a three stage charging algorithm in them to ensure our auxiliary batteries get a decent form of charge. Some of the other benefits of these DC to DC charge controls is they also have a solar input in them as well. So you can kill two birds with one stone. You can use it to uh, control the charge from your alternator while we're driving and also when stationary, we can control the charge from our solar panel. The different types of DC DCs will come with a current rating on them. So this device is a 40 amp uh, DC to DC. Okay, so 40 amp minimum um, when your battery needs it. You've got a 25 amp red arc and a 40 amp red arc unit over here. So they will control how much charge goes to your auxiliary batteries. These guys here, your simple uh, dual battery combiners, are reliant on the ability of charge that your alternator can deliver. 
So quite a small alternator will only deliver a small amount of charge. A large truck alternator is going to be able to deliver a hell of a lot more charge than a small alternator that you might have on a small four cylinder four wheel drive. The other thing that determines our charge rate with all of these devices is our cable size. Okay, installing too small a cable on our vehicle charge systems will limit the ability for us to charge. There is a formula that allows you to calculate the certain cable size you need for different current ratings. If we're charging a battery in the back of a caravan, it's completely different to charging a battery under bonnet of a vehicle. We're talking two or three metre distance versus nine or 10 metres to get to that battery in the back of the caravan. Our cable size increases dramatically from six or eight square mil right up to you know, 32 square mil, depending on the amount of current we want to deliver. So cable sizing is critical in dual battery systems. The other thing that's critical in a dual battery system is our fuse or circuit breaker protection. Anything we connect to a battery needs to be protected. We are trying to remove the ability for a short circuit to cause a fire or to cause serious damage in our vehicle. So anything that connects to a battery positive has a fuse or circuit breaker on it. Now when we're charging with DC to DC charge controllers and charging with dual battery isolators, we're talking large amount of current, 40 amps, 50 amps, 60 amps worth of charge rate. We need to ensure that that circuit breaker or that fuse can handle the current. You know, if you're unsure, consult your manual. The little red arc smart start, if we're using it just as a dual battery isolator, arcs us for a 60 amp fuse or circuit breaker. If we want to use the override function on this device that allows us to start off our auxiliary battery, we're going to have start current passing through this device. We need a larger fuse. They talk about 120 or 130 amp fuse if you're using the smart start function on it. So consult your manual, look at the cable you want to use and determine your fuse or circuit breaker to connect your dual battery system in. Look at the drawings, you know, we, in, in our business here, we would always run a full negative return from all our batteries. So that, that means that we're running a positive cable through our device and we're running a full negative return from that device or from that auxiliary battery back to our start battery. We're not earthing or, or, or doing a negative return on our chassis or body. It just means by running a twin core cable, positive and negative, we're getting a much better continuity of charge, a much better flow of energy in and out of our battery systems. You know, there, a simpler or cheaper way to do it will be to bolt off that, that uh, negative return onto the engine block or onto the body of the vehicle. If you run a full negative return, you will get a better charge rate. And over time, you're not having that, that bolt or that item come loose or corrode. You can ensure longevity of your charge systems, you know, for many years to come. So now we might have a look at a few different dual battery types and systems and show you some examples of how they're installed. So what we have here is a simple under bonnet dual battery system. Uh, this vehicle uses the Red Arc Smart Start dual battery device, which is installed just behind our fuse box here. We have start battery on the uh, passenger side and our auxiliary battery is installed on the driver's side. Our auxiliary battery is located away from any heat sources because excessive heat will shorten the life of our batteries. If we can't find a suitable uh, place for our battery under bonnet away from heat or in a location that can be secured sufficiently, the battery is then better off going in into the tray or into the boot or in an alternative location. This dual battery isolator, when the engine is started, puts these two batteries in parallel. The little red light will come on on this device and that is telling us that batteries are in parallel, they're being charged together. When the vehicle is switched off, the red light will stay on for a short period of time. When we start drawing energy out of our auxiliary battery, light goes off and the batteries are now disengaged and isolated from each other. We can draw down on our auxiliary battery and our start battery remains full. So we'll start the vehicle engine now and that will simulate what's going on. Dual battery isolator is down here. In a short period, there it goes, red light has come on. The batteries are in parallel. We're charging together. 
If we had a voltmeter on these devices, we'd see the voltage between the two batteries rising as we charge them up. We know from our previous talks, we need to apply a voltage to those batteries to start them. Turn the vehicle off. Red light's staying on. The batteries are still in parallel. They're still linked together. If we were to connect a fridge or some lighting or a heavy load to our auxiliary battery, very quickly the voltage will drop and our little red light will turn off. Our batteries are now disengaged. We can draw down on that one. Our start battery remains full so we can get home from our trip. Okay, so on this vehicle is a tray back ute. Uh, we've got the ability to put a battery under the tray so it's secured in a nice holder. It's in a cool environment there. Battery's gonna last longer than if it, if it was installed under bonnet, in the heat of the bonnet. And we've got our dual battery, Red Arc dual battery isolator installed in the uh, little box behind it. When we start the vehicle, the indicator lights to come on that we're charging from vehicle. And it also tells us which charging algorithm it's using. So A, B, C, or lithium. So different battery types will have a different charging algorithm. The other benefit on this vehicle is that that unit there is also controlling the solar panel that's on the roof racks on the vehicle. So like I said before, the advantage of some of these devices is they can be used for a dual battery uh, charge system, a dual battery isolator, and also a solar controller. So this vehicle has been set up for both, 40 amp unit in there, charging our auxiliary battery and isolating us from our start battery for when we're stationary. We can run all our appliances, we run our fridge and our lighting loads off this battery here without affecting our starter, without flattening our start battery. All right, so if we're in a vehicle that doesn't have a location that we can install a battery, we might look at using a portable device. Now this is a projector power hub Oh, it's got an inbuilt battery monitor, it's got uh, some fancy features on it, um, some cigarette sockets, some USB uh, sockets and things. But the main benefit is we can install it in the vehicle and we can remove it. We can pull it out to use at our campsite, we can pull it out when we change vehicles over. What it doesn't have inside it though is a dual battery isolator. So we would couple this device with one of our products here to allow this to be charged while we're driving. We put this in in the, uh, in the boot of the vehicle, we'd connect it up via an Anderson plug or maybe via the studs inside the battery here. So we would wire a, a loop off those studs to an Anderson plug to allow us to charge this while we're driving. Does mean it can be removed if you need that space in the back of the car or when you're not traveling, when you're not away on weekends, but various types of portable batteries can be used as an auxiliary battery in our vehicle. So to sum up, auxiliary batteries work great in vehicles when we use the right products. If you're unsure what dual battery isolator or product you need, look, look on the websites. Red Arc have a list of vehicles that require DC-DC charge controllers. Um, check if your vehicle is there. If it is a late model four-wheel drive, you can be pretty confident that you're going to need one of these more sophisticated devices. Older model vehicles on a simple solenoid. Cable sizing is critical in auxiliary battery installations. The bigger the cable, the more ability you've got to charge. Anything that touches a battery needs a fuse or circuit breaker, you should always be protecting your cabling with a fuse or circuit breaker. We don't want a fire, we don't want an incident on the road. So thanks for your time today and many happy travels.